agreed on every point. Still to come tonight, the lightweight battle for the championship held by Cesar Bazan. The opponent, Stevie Johnston, whose only loss in his career was to Bazan last summer. Johnston with revenge on his mind. Let's look ahead to some upcoming programs here on HBO Sports. On March 6th, watch for David Reed against 154-pound champion Laurent Boudouani, gold medalist Reed attempting to win his first world title in just his 12th professional fight. Also that night, seemingly indestructible Lou Savarese takes on Lance Mount Whitaker. Two weeks later, Boxing After Dark returns with more heavyweights. Ike Bayabuchi, best known for his thrilling decision over David Tua, takes on another excellent fighter, Chris Bird. Also, Canadian Kirk Johnson and Al Ice Cole fight a rematch of their Rock'em Sock'em majority draw from December. On March 8th, HBO presents the next edition of Sports of the 20th Century, Dare to Compete, the struggle of women in sports. This historical documentary chronicles the history of women in sports, depicting how the suffrage movement, the 60s, and Title IX helped set the stage for today's women athletes. That's in nine days, right here on HBO. Back live at Mikasuki with the tail of the tape for the lightweight world championship battle between Cesar Bazan, 24 years old, and 26-year-old Stevie Johnston. We told you about the 7-inch height differential, 8-inch reach differential, both in favor of Bazan tonight. They're one pound apart at 143 and 144. Any illuminating punch stat insights, Larry? All that we know is Bazan won a split decision in that fight last June, and the numbers suggest that he earned that split decision, landing more big punches than Johnston. And rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. Jim, once again, Cesar Bazan and Stevie Johnson are going to fight for 12 rounds using those unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. Jim, the key, key rule here is it's the accidental butt rule. You know, when you get a little guy fighting the big guy, certainly you got to look for an accidental headbutt. We go four rounds before we go to the scorecards. If there's a cut before that, it's a technical draw. Back to you, Jim. All right, Harold, at 11.30 at night, on the East Coast here, there's a premium on short walkouts, and fortunately, we've got them as we get ready to watch Denver, Colorado's own Stevie Johnston come into the ring. He worked out away from Denver in training for his first matchup with Bazan, and his handlers say that was a big mistake. Stevie is the kind of guy who is only happy when he's training at home, and uh, they will not again allow him to get ready for a big fight outside the confines of Denver. He can't stand to miss a Broncos game. He can't stand to miss a Nuggets game unless he absolutely has to. Close a look at Stevie Johnston, Larry. He's defeated three current champions. John Paul Mendy, tough Frenchman. Sharimba Mitchell, a 140-pound title holder, and James Page, 147 pound title holder during his career. As an amateur, he fought Shane Mosley three times and defeated him once. He is a quality prize fighter. And who do you suppose, of course, is the professional fighter he'd most like to get a fight with? Shane Mosley. Incidentally, those three amateur fights were all three two decisions. Here comes Cesar Bazan. Engaging, personable young man from Mexico. Beat Johnston last June in El Paso in a stadium filled with 46,000 people, third largest live gate for boxing matches in the USA here in the last 50 years. The big attraction that night was Oscar De La Hoya against Patrick Charpentier, but Johnston's handlers like to say that the largely Mexican and Mexican-American crowd helped to influence the judges at ringside and therefore helped to give Bazan victory. Closer look at Cesar Bazan. Certainly the tallest light heavyweight title holder I can recall. Lightweight. Sorry, lightweight title holder. Mexico's ninth lightweight champion. And he too wants Shane Mosley. The winner tonight probably will get Shane Mosley. So if the fourth man in the ring in the first fight was Roy Jones, the fourth man in the ring in this fight is Shane Mosley. Let's go up right now to the other man in the ring, Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen from Miccosukee Indian Gaming, located here on the Miccosukee Indian Reservation of South Florida, Bob Arum's Top Rank Incorporated presents the rematch. 
12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Lightweight Championship of the World. Sanctioned by the Mikasuki Athletic Commission Chairman Billy Cypress, Vice Chairman Jasper Nelson, Commissioners Andrew Burt, Max Billy, and Jerry Cypress, Executive Director Don Hazelton. Physicians at ringside, Dr. Stanley Simpson and Dr. Ramon Garcia Septien. Timekeeper at the bell, Alberto Hernandez, and counting for the knockdown seconds, alternate referee Max Parker Jr. This bout is also sanctioned by the World Boxing Council, President Jose Suleiman, supervisor at ringside for the WBC, Hector Garcia. The three judges scoring this bout. Scoring it on a 10-point must system will be Memo Ayon of Mexico, Anek Hongtongkam from Thailand, and Michael Pernick from Florida. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Tommy Kimmins. And now, from Mikasuki Indian Gaming of South Florida, for the sold-out crowd in attendance and the millions watching around the world on HBO, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing blue, trimmed with white. He weighs 134 and one half pounds. He comes to us from the mile high city of Denver, Colorado, and brings a professional record of 25 victories, 14 by knockout, with only one defeat tonight. He plans to avenge that single blemish on his record and recapture the title. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the challenger, former world lightweight champion. He's little but bad. Stevie Johnson. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner. He's wearing white, green, and red, and also weighed in at 134 and one half pounds. He also has an outstanding record, consisting of 37 bouts, 34 victories, 23 by knockout, with only two losses and one draw. Ladies and gentlemen, from Mexico City, Mexico, presenting the reigning and defending WBC lightweight champion of the world, Cesar Baza. Chief seconds only. Chief seconds. Byron, chief seconds. Gentlemen, this fight is for the championship of the world, and I gave you the instructions. I want to remind you that this audience is here to watch you fight, so keep it clean. Touch them up. Roy, Stevie Johnson still looks like a point guard, and Cesar <laughs> Bazan still looks like a power forward. How can Johnston change what happened last June? I don't know uh, Larry exactly, but it's going to be a difficult task how he does it because the problem is that Bazaar fights like a port guard. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's an interesting conundrum because the classic strategy here for Johnston would be to get inside, get to the body, work the rib cage. But Bazan, as you mentioned in the previous fight, Roy, likes to fight inside. He's unusually gifted for a tall, lanky fighter in that regard. He loves it and does a terrific job of fighting inside. So what Miguel Diaz, the assistant trainer in Johnston's corner, told us yesterday is Stevie has to remember to get in, do his damage, and come back out. He doesn't think that Bazan can fight at all from the outside. And Miguel Diaz, in theory, should know because he was once Cesar Bazan's trainer. Well, he should know. Stevie Johnston coming in on a high energy groove and 
Bassan lands a hard right hand, and Johnston fires back with the left. Stevie, incidentally, Roy, insists to us that he must wear brand new boxing shoes straight out of the box, fresh, never before worn for every boxing match. Strange, right? No, not strange. Now you like it? It might make him feel brand new. <laughs> you want everything about you to feel new. You wouldn't worry about blisters? Nope. All right, well then, then you're in sync with Johnston. If you win the fight, you won't worry about blisters either. <laughs> That's exactly what he said. He said, I want to feel like everything I have on is brand new. The trunks, the robe, the boots, everything. Well, he's fighting a semi-new fight. He is going in and out. He's not trying to stand chest to chest with the bigger guy. Yeah, but meanwhile, Bazan doesn't look exactly ineffective from the outside as he fires his jab and brings a left hook behind it. Doesn't look ineffective at all from the outside. Bazan getting to the body, firing his right hand behind the jab. And generally looking just as comfortable as he did in the ring eight months ago in El Paso. Johnston had a shot with the right hand as Bazan was backing away. Didn't really get any mustard on the punch. Bazan lands a hard right hand there. Left hand upstairs for Johnston. One good thing about Bazan that I like is that it never seems like he's set to punch, but he's always there to retaliate. And he has a sneaky straight right lead from the outside. So whoever said he can't fight from the outside is definitely wrong. Well, they fought 12 rounds in El Paso, oh, no and fight. none of them were as good as that round that they just fought there. It looks like we might have more of an action fight this time around. Everything's okay. Everything's calm. Interpreter Hector Garcia in Bazan's corner. Cesar. Everything that, we, everything that we've been working in the gym, you didn't even throw it once, that, that hook. You have to get closer to him, and don't forget. Keep him up, both sides, keep him up. Very good, but don't stay too long. It's in, boom, boom, and out. Stay, stay focused, stay focused. Very good. Very active, very straight punches. Let's go, Let's go, Red. A primo round Let's go, it. for the once and perhaps future title holder. Stevie Johnston still up on his toes and firing the left hand to begin round two. Just a much higher energy level than he seemed to show in El Paso. In the case of Johnston, Hassan looks much the same. One thing for, for in Johnston's favor is that tonight the crowd is not uh, against him so much. When we were in Mexico, everybody was against him. Right. Or a few miles from Mexico, anyway. Yeah, El Paso. Great! No punches, no punches. Hot night in the border town, it was. The night the light trusses almost came down. 50 mile an hour winds strafing the stadium. Hassan landing his left jab, keeping it in Stevie Johnston's face. Johnston working to get in and get out. Johnston's landed some very good body shots early in this fight. Part of his bread and butter. With Hassan landing a left hook, chopping off the side of Johnston's face. So far, fighting a very intelligent fight, a fight that he was that he planned, fighting according to plan here. In, out, throw his punches and get out. Use his jab much better too. He's out jabbing the tall of his arm. Higher activity level, much more accurate with his punches so far than he seemed to be in El Paso last year. He just has to be careful not to run into any of those big punches Bazan are throwing. And this is taking nothing away from Bazan, because he's not off to a bad start. He's just facing a different Stevie Johnston. Good double right hand there by Cesar Bazan. So 
far. The point guard is going to the basket, Roy. Yeah, he is. But the poor forward ain't doing too bad himself. <laughs> this is a hard, demanding sport. Nothing about it is easy. The long work in the gym, waiting for fight night, excruciatingly difficult for a lot of fighters, but you can just see here, as you watch this, two guys who like to fight. The fluid freedom that they have in the ring. Two guys who love to fight. You mentioned Larry, Shane Mosley, the fourth man in the ring. How about some potential opponents down the road for Sugar Shane? Well, we're looking at two of them right here, and Stevie Johnson and Cesar Bazan, Bazan, and of course, Ivan Robinson, the Philadelphia lightweight, who defeated Arturo Gatti twice last year, and has a fight upcoming against Angel Manfredi. Trained by the same Bowie Fisher whom you saw earlier this evening in the corner of Will Taylor. He's getting inside. He's getting inside. Use the combination. The one, two. Okay. Listen to me so you can win this championship. You have to listen to me. One, two, one, two. When do you, what are you going to do when you get there? Hit him. Use that left hook. Compu box numbers through round two. Stevie Johnston landing 35% of his punches. That's a significant rise from last year in El Paso. Bazan limited to 23% in the first two rounds. Not as high as was his connect percentage down on the border town. So Bazan comes out trying to work his jab and back Johnston up a little bit to begin round three. Because he was getting out jabbed in the first two rounds, so now he's trying to change the momentum a little bit. Of course, you have the southpaw against conventional fighter problem here. Stevie Johnston steps inside and lands a hard body shot. If you're in Bazan's position in this fight, you have to worry about headbutts. It's an extra consideration inside. Most fighters say, oh, I don't worry about them. If they're going to happen, they're going to happen. But logic tells you it's got to be at least in the back of your mind. Yes, especially when you find a, a smaller south pole, a shorter south pole, should I say. It's, it's got to be a distraction. Stevie Jans Johnson can't make the mistake of letting Bazan get off first like he let him do right there. Good quick right hook inside by Johnston after Bazan had landed a right hand to the body. Bazan with a left hook inside. Johnston firing a counter back. Bazan is landing that straight right lead at will against Johnson. Both fighters landing punches inside again there. Stevie Johnston beating Cesar Bazan to the punch inside, something he wasn't able to do in El Paso. Oh, that right hand right there is going to be... A big problem in this fight if he continues to get hit with. Straight right hand again for Bazan. Have you had this referee before, Tommy Kimmons? Yeah, I had him, I think, in some of my earlier fights, Joe. You know? He's a very good referee. He used to be a fighter himself, and I always like to see guys that know how to do the sport that have been in there before referee fights. They make better referees to me. Right. In, a, in an uneven crop here in Florida, my memory tells me he's one of the best. Cesar Bazan stepping up the activity level here in round three. And Johnson catches him on the back of the head, and Kimmons is going to give Bazan a rest for a moment. Kimmons sending Stevie Johnston to a neutral corner. Does Bazan get five full minutes here, Harold, if he wants it? It is an accidental foul, but I tell you something, I've never seen a guy get hurt like that on a rabbit punch. You hit him in the back of the head, it's a rabbit punch. I mean, and Bazan turns away like he's dead. I mean, it's very strange. Okay? Really well, is. Well, I, I think he was hurt. I think it hit him on the neck. Are you ready to go? Uh, uh, 
there's a lot of nerve endings in there, and I thought that was a legitimate response from him. It wasn't really a hard punch to the back of the head either. No, it wasn't, but if you hit a guy in the right spot, it can discombobulate him for a while. Or maybe Bazan yeah, wants to change the momentum yeah, of the fight a little bit. You but okay? I thought he was doing well in this round. Are you ready to go? Are you ready to go? You want to see a doctor? Let me get a doctor. I know, I know. Come over here. Come over here. Come over here. Now, Kimmons is going to bring a doctor in to talk to Bazan. Do they have a doctor who speaks Spanish? Bazan doesn't speak English. Yes, they do have a doctor who speaks Spanish. Okay, you're not going to give him an MRI. Our interpreter, and now Kimmons decides to take a point away. Well, I don't understand that. Just after I've said the guy's a good referee, if he was going to take a point away, why didn't he take it away before? Jim, let me tell you, that's what he wanted. I mean, that was the purpose of the whole thing. He wanted that one point. I tell you, it wasn't fair. It wasn't fair to Stevie Johnson, not at all. Just don't understand how a referee can take the point away at the end of the entire sequence instead of when the foul occurred. And a newly motivated Stevie Johnston goes back to work. How do you feel? How do you feel? You have to throw punches. You have to keep throwing more punches. You're not throwing enough. That left it. Lift your head up. Lift your head up. Put some Vaseline there. Put some ice in there. You hear me? Jim. And he just want to quit. He looking for a way out, baby. Give him a way out. Give him a way out. Give him a way out. You hear me? Take a look. It's obviously an unintentional punch here as he comes up from the back. Might not have been the hardest punch, but it wasn't a tap either. And Don didn't look very good sitting on the stool in the corner, Roy. No, he didn't. Well, maybe he doesn't like the fact that Stevie Johnston landed 31 of 71 punches in the round. Most of them power shots. Masan landing 26 out of 72. Very active fight compared to what happened in El Paso. Johnston forcing the issue tonight. Hard straight right hand lands for Stevie. And Bazan comes back with a right and a left and another hard right. Where Bazan won a tactical boxing match on the inside in El Paso, a fight has broken out in Miami. <laughs> Bazan nodding to Johnson and smiling as if to say, yeah, you're on tonight. Oh, that right hand right there was the problem, Jim. Yeah. That's good left hand by Stevie, though. But you're right, Bazan is still landing his straight right hand. And if he throws it more often, It'll pose a bigger problem. There it is. There it is again. And there's the left, the left hand from Stevie again. You can't keep getting hit with that right clean hand, though. Clean break. Let him go. Let him go, Stevie. They're both getting hit tonight. Forced uppercut from outside by Bazan. Johnston landing two hard shots inside. Stevie ducking away and coming back with the left. Blood trickling from the right nostril of Stevie Johnston. That, no doubt, the product of Cesar Bazan's straight right hands. That's Stevie Johnston's one tough warrior, Jim. I don't think the blood coming out of his nostrils is going to bother Stevie. No, not at all. Just more satisfying evidence that he's in a real fight. <laughs> oh, good left hand. Just as Bazan is landing lead right hands, Johnston is landing lead left.
anytime he stepped around right here. So what was a body shot chess match in Texas last summer becomes a power shot war in Miami to our great satisfaction on Boxing After Dark. Come, how do you feel? How do you feel? You feeling okay? You are falling asleep, Cesar. You, ha you have to help us win this fight. We have to win this fight. It's a must. You're falling asleep in that ring. Move side to side. Use that left hook. Use your match. Use your legs a lot. Use your legs. You got beautiful legs. I want you to use them, all right? Here we see Johnson catching that straight right hand, but coming right back, the left and a right, using his little man quickness to overcome the bigger guy. CompuBox numbers giving Johnson credit for 37 out of 50 power shots in round four, 74% connect percentage. Bazan, however, doing damage with those right-hand leads. Harold Letterman, how do you have it through the first bowl? Jim, I'll tell you, I got it three rounds for Stevie Johnson, one round even, because I thought he won that round with Tommy Kibbins took away a point, but when Kibbins takes away the point, it becomes 9-9 nine, nine, an even round. So 39-36, little Stevie Johnson, he's getting inside, landing a strong and left-hand shots, winning every round by getting in, getting up the shots, and getting out. Johnston spending more and more time in close with Bazan now. Less and less of the moving in and out, which was so obvious as the battle plan in rounds one and two. And as Johnston stays inside more and more against Bazan, he may play more and more into Bazan's strength, fighting on the inside. He may feel, Jim, that Bazan is weakening somehow. You can see both of Bazan's eyes seem to be swelling up a little bit. Yeah, Bazan doesn't seem to like the power punches that Stevie's hitting him with tonight either. Stevie's hitting him a lot harder tonight than he did last summer. He's just got a lot more zip. Get him up, both of them. Keep him up. Bazan trying to get to the body. Johnston trying to block the shots with his elbows and come back up with uppercuts inside. Good body shot by Cesar Bazan. But I think it's safer for Steve to stay right inside as far as the head shot goes, Jim, because he doesn't want to get hit with that straight right hand too much. Inside, oh, good hook. Both of Bazan's eyes swelling. You saw the cut over Stevie Johnson's left eye between rounds. And they're landing more power shots to each other's faces here in round five. See, that's why Steve doesn't want to catch the hair shots right there. This is becoming a blistering fight. Run. Great. Big time yeah. stuff. Don't work out of that. Stevie is faring much better in these exchanges tonight than he did in, in uh, group one. El Paso. Yep. That's where you came with a red suit, boy. <laughs> How can you forget that? He's probably got a dozen of them. <laughs> I think they fought too early in the day in El Paso. This just needed to be after 11.30. You almost had him. You almost had him, sister. Don't, don't let him stand there. One, two, one, two from the outside. Don't, go. don't just go in there and do nothing. One and two combinations. One and two, one and two, jab, jab. Deep breath, champ. Deep breath. Deep breath. Come on, Steve. Don't let him die now. Don't let him Okay. You got it here, Steve. He want to quit, baby. You make it quick, you make it quick, okay? Take it down, take it down. Take it down, Cesar. Are they 
encouraging Johnston to get out of that fight plan of in or out by talking about trying to make him quit, Roy? Yes, they are. They want Johnston to keep the pressure on him. Well, he's doing better when he's in than he is when he's out, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't disagree with that. Especially with the head shots. Despite Diaz's assertion that Bazan can't fight from outside, Bazan has been effective from outside, particularly with the right hand leads. But inside, unlike in El Paso, Johnson's greater energy level, his commitment to punishing Bazan is the difference. Hard body shots by Bazan, seizing the momentum now in round six. tonight are from Tijuana, Bangkok, and West Palm Beach. There's that big right hand again. Break! No punches! Bingo! Break! Bazan is tying Stevie up on the inside more than he did in uh, El Paso. And Tommy Kimmons is warning him about holding. Look, body shots from Bazan. Good hair shot from Johnson, though. Johnson takes a heck of a punch. Go. We go here. Come on. Pause right to put the mouthpiece back in the mouth of Stevie Johnston. No water. Have to wait for a logical break in the action. Break. No punching. No punching. Let him go. Hold it. An abrasion on the bridge of Bazan's nose now. Swelling just as his eyes are, and Bazan fighting with greater urgency in round six. Straight right hand backs Johnston up. That was Bazan's best round. Certainly. to his left, always walk to his left. It's getting late for this. Walk, walk to his left. You ha listen to me. Please, listen to me. This is for you. This is your title. Here we see Bazan showing how effective he is to the body. Johnson responding with a straight right. And coming back to the body himself. Tough, grueling, hard-hitting fight. Hassan out-throwing and out-landing Johnson in the last round by CompuBox numbers, but still, Johnston landing his power shots with a very high rate of accuracy and punishing Bazan when he does. Looks like Johnson is going back to his in and out strategy that was so effective in the first three or four rounds. Lands that left hand twice inside and now once.
punch to the body. You know, they both take the punch pretty well. They both take some real good punches. with Brian Gumbel among the stories an investigation into the Olympic scandal which has rocked the whole sporting world and a profile of Kentucky College basketball coach Tubby Smith real sports Brian Gumbel only on HBO Sports airing this Sunday February 28th that would be tomorrow actually that would be today on the East Coast Fight. You have to you have to do whatever it takes now. This is your fight. Come on. You have to do this. Let's go, Red. Come on, let's go. And as you look at the swelling on Cesar Bazan's face, the CompuBox number that corresponds to that is Stevie Johnston's 199 to 139 edge so far in the bout in power shots landed. Johnston getting inside, busting Bazan to the face as he did there. And then, for the most part, getting back outside. That was a perfect example of the in and out that he talked about. Oh, another good shot. He is so accurate with his left hand. Johnston's corner has done a pretty good job of controlling the bleeding above Stevie's left eye. Diaz also gives a lot of excellent tactical advice to the fighter. He's the number two in there, Richard Johnston. Stevie's uncle is his trainer, but he's letting Miguel Diaz do most of the talking. And another hard left shot has damaged Bazan's right eye. He is fighting like a man possessed, <laughs> Stevie Johnston. Both of them are. I mean, yeah, you can't fault 
Lazan's effort. He's doing everything possible to stem the tide, but Stevie Johnston's a man on a mission tonight. Great. No punch. No punch. Looks like a cut on the bridge of Bazan's nose. Can't tell yet whether it's bothering his vision. Well, you can tell it's bothering his concentration, though, because he tried to trip Stevie Johnson just now. The referee told him no kicking. <laughs> and Bazan's right eye is closing just as fast, if not faster, than Stevie Johnson's left eye. Somewhere, Arturo Gatti is watching and saying, yeah, that's a fight. <laughs> <laughs> well, both of these guys will be looking in the mirror in two weeks and know they've been in a fight still. Still trying to chop away with the right hand to the body. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Come on, we have to do something. You're, you're not doing anything. You're not walking to his left. You're not walking to his left. Every time you hold him, you have to walk to his left. Come on. Here you can see Johnson working on the head, battering. Design's eye. All right, Roy Jones, between rounds, we heard Lee Espinoza asking his fighter, Cesar Bazan, to keep walking to Johnson's left, trying to get him to walk past Johnson's left hand, right? Right. Hasn't been able to do it. Stevie's been able to make his left hand a factor in every round. Harold, how do you have it so far? <laughs> Jim, 78-73, 6 one even little Stevie Johnson. I still think he gets inside, he does more damage, he backs the side, and all Bazan could do is grab him and ride him across the ring. In other words, use that size of power to lean on Johnson and try and push him back to weaken him somewhat. And I'll tell you, I, I think little Stevie's doing a heck of a job. I hope the judges are watching the same thing I am. They see right there, Bazan's got him, and he's riding him right across the ring, trying to make Johnson go backwards to weaken him. I have it five, two, and one. I'm a little concerned about the judging in this fight. We'll talk about that later. And of course, remember, referee Tommy Kimmins ultimately deducted a point from Johnston for rabbit punching Bazan in an earlier round. I tell you what, Johnston's doing a much better job of keeping these big punches off of him late in this fight. Last fight, he let Bazan land a lot of big punches late in the fight. This fight, he seems to be catching a lot more with his, arm, with his arms. Well, and, and as you say, he's blunted Bazan's straight right hand, which was a weapon in the earlier rounds, because Stevie's found a way to start blocking the straight right at the same time, but he continues to score with his left. Not an easy thing to do. No, it's not. This also shows an example of what a hometown crowd can do for a fighter. Back in Mexico, these two, I mean, in Texas, these guys were just as tired as they are now, but Bazan was showing much bigger output, and he didn't hold as much inside because he was much busier punching. And the now crowd he, was cheering him on. Right, now he doesn't have the crowd behind him, so he's spending more time holding than punching. Uh, well, he's also taken a lot more punches in the first half of the fight. 
just been such a spirited effort for Stevie. Great. Such a step up from what he was able to do eight months ago. And Bazan got a ton of credit for beating Johnston at that time. Because clearly that night, he appeared to be the superior fighter. But not tonight. Now, we talk a lot about what happened last June in El Paso. Watch this, and maybe you'll see some of the difference, keeping in mind that tonight, Stevie Johnston is landing half his power shots or more. Miss. Partial connect. Body, body, miss. Partial connect. But you also see that there is still a close quarter, but he's not holding, he's punching instead. Exactly. And there was Bazan being raised, being lifted in victory there. And there's the punch stat profile of the same thing we're talking about. Stevie Johnston boosting his connect percentage by 15 full percentage points. Felipe Bravo has had the job of trying to keep Bazan's eyes open and serviceable for these last few rounds. And Bravo finishes doing what he does between rounds. Stevie Johnston goes to work in the round to try to reverse everything Bravo's accomplished. I think Stevie Johnston's jab was a better, a better weapon for him this fight, too. His jab got an established uh, position for him early in the fight. Now he probably should go back to it a little bit for a Great. minute. Pace is slowed a little bit here. Oh, and Bazan trying to signal the referee that he got rabbit punched again, paused, and gave Johnston a chance to land another hard shot. Great. Did you see a rabbit punch? No. Nope. But Bazan attempted to make the referee think there had been one. I guess he thinks he can get another point to take. He might have been poked in the eye, and that was... Nope, he keeps pawing at the back of his head, Larry. He's trying to show the referee that he's getting rabbit punched. And the referee did say something to Johnston about it just there, too. No question, no question. I think Johnston's been close to landing to the back of the head a couple times, but I think he pulled the punch both times. Schedule 12, Stevie Johnston of Denver, Colorado, still bouncing on his feet, attacking and moving away, showing the superior energy level that seemingly has given him control of the fight most of the way through. Hard left hand by Johnston. He just will not be denied tonight. He wants this belt back and he means it. Well, which leaves me in suspense as to when Larry's going to tell us his concerns about the judging. <laughs> End of the fight, no fighting, no So fighting. stay tuned. Don't take anything for granted. Great! No fighting, no fighting. I tell you what, Jim, I think the body shots have made Pazon a little more fatigued in this fight than he was in the first fight, too. And now Stevie lands a chopping Great. right no hook in there. No. Good shot. Johnston's just gotten better and better now. There goes Stevie's mouthpiece again. Johnston's mouthpiece on the canvas. A round comes to a close. Stop the fight. You're a Mexican. Come on. You got to fight. Come on. You are a Mexican. You have to fight. All of the Mexicans are saying that we're not nothing. Come on. Come on. You only you do this holding. 
Let's take a look here and see if there anything happened. I didn't see anything. No, there was no rabbit punch there. And it may be exactly because of that that Lee Espinosa is asking his fighter, right asking his fighter if he wants to quit. Well, that was yeah. a tap, but it wasn't no yeah, hard the, punch. The, he just the, touched him. The animal that's operative here, a mouse, is the mouse. There, there are mice under Bizan's eyes. Yeah, but I think what Espinosa wanted to know is, are there mice in his heart? <laughs> no, he's a tough kid. I take nothing away from him. If he's beaten, it's because he's beaten. For the most part, he has fought bravely against an opponent who has simply carried the fight to him every step of the way. Places on Stevie Johnson's trucks, it says little but bad. He's been little but bad and little but good tonight. And little but big in the way he's fought Bizarre. Well, if he gets his shot at Shane Mosley, he'll be facing a size differential there as well. I told you they met three times as amateurs, mostly one, two. All of them were three, two decisions. According to Stevie, it'll be interesting to see how Shane and his dad, Jack Mosley, remember it. this guy out in order to win. You have to knock him out. You need this bad. You need this fight really bad. You have to knock him out. You have to win. You have to give it all you got. Okay, don't leave nothing in the tank. Go back out there and make sure, all right? You have to stand up. Come on, you have to. You have to go for it. This is the last round. You have to knock him out. Let's go, Tiger. Let's go, man. Let's go, man. Couldn't be plainer than that. Good body shot right off the bat, my son. One judge is from New York State. That's Harold Letterman. He's unofficial. How do you have it so far? Jim, eight, two, no punches, one no even, punches. 107, 101, a six-point lead for little Stevie Johnson. He's doing all the fighting. He's getting inside, and just as you're going in, he's banging Bazan around. I tell you, this is how you fight an octopus, because this guy's an octopus. He lays all over you, Caesar Bazan. But I tell you, Johnson's doing a great job. Just outworking him on the inside. He goes 
his arms, elbows, and holding and all that nonsense, and he just beats him up. The three official scorers at ringside who will decide the winner if it goes to distance are Memo Ayon, a former fighter from Tijuana, Mexico, who once got a win over the fading Sugar Ray Robinson. Anek Hongtong Pam of Bangkok, Thailand, who's a WBC regular. We see him a lot. And Michael Pernick of West Palm Beach, Florida. Good heavy exchange right there. There's nobody from Denver in that crew. Nope. Bazan looking for the knockout, though. Let him go in there. Let him go. Great. And Stevie Johnston just fighting his fight. Same thing he's done all along. tendency when you're tired, Roy? Yes, yeah, a natural tendency when you're tired, but it's good for Stevie Johnson because right now he's ahead in his fight. Sure, he needs up time on the clock. That's right. Cold logic would say to you that if Stevie's standing at the end of this round, he's going to have his title back. Logic does not always obtain in the scoring of championship boxing matches, as we've seen. Both of these guys have dynamite chins. No punching, no punching. Let's see it going. Let's see it. Hey, listen, this fight was so much better than the first fight between the two of them. I don't find myself terribly resistant to the notion of a third meeting somewhere down the road. <laughs> Trading shots. Bazan's right, Johnston's left. It's been that way throughout the fight. So Stevie Johnston, after 24 straight wins, ran into a puzzle he couldn't solve in Cesar Bazan last summer in El Paso, Texas. He brooded about it for months. He told himself, I'm not the kind of fighter who deserves to have a loss like that on my record. And he came here tonight with an obvious, thrilling determination to take his title back. And to our eyes, at least, it would appear he's accomplished just that. Let's hope the judges give the right decision. You have any more to say about it than that? Well, we're better at autopsies than at predictions. So let's just wait. Is what I'm saying. And Harold? I got a 116-111, little Stevie Johnson by five uh, by five points, 8-3, one even in rounds. Uh, you know that that second that third round becomes even. In the tenth round, Johnson did tap him in the back of the head, but you know, hey, it's protect yourself at all times. The referee didn't yell stop, so Johnson whacked him. I can't, you know, I can't fault Stevie Johnson no. for what he did. No, I don't think you can fault him for that. That was intelligent fighting. Exactly, Jim. The damage to Johnston, the damage to Bazan. You could have fit all 12 rounds of action in El Paso into two rounds of this. Yeah, you were. Two little guys with two huge hearts. Yep. It was a punishing war. Cesar Bazan, as we told you from the beginning, a tall fighter who, unusually for a guy of his range and size, likes to fight inside. But in round one, it was clear Stevie Johnston was going to get inside and try to do damage. Then in round three, the rabbit punch incident. Johnston inadvertently hitting Bazan on the back of the head. Bazan asking for time to recover, taking several minutes to recover, and eventually prompting referee Tommy Kimmins to decide to take a point away from Stevie Johnston for what had appeared to be clearly an accidental foul. 
But then as the rounds went on, Johnston continued to punish Bazan inside. The visible evidence on Bazan's face in front of you. And to our eyes again, just to repeat the obvious, it appeared that Stevie Johnston carried the fight, dominated the action, landed more than half of his power shots, and won his lightweight championship back. A hug from his uncle. Miguel Diaz continuing to uh, sponge the cut. Lee Espinosa, the trainer right there, who trains Bazan. You may see him down the road because he's got a terrific young junior welterweight prospect named Antonio Diaz, who could show up on this network somewhere in the future. And for the second time tonight, we wait an inordinately long time for the official scores. Looking to see if Michael Buffer has them in his hands yet. And the answer appears to be no. Stevie Johnston's uncle, Richard Johnston, looking over at us and giving us the thumbs up. Obviously, more than satisfied with the performance his fighter produced tonight. I'll be there to help me, Alex. How about Larry remembering that you wore a red suit in El Paso? Huh? <laughs> Larry remembers everything. It was a good fight. Good fight. <laughs> Bazan's trainer, Lee Espinosa, tells us that he's girl crazy. Well, the girls will certainly be impressed with his manliness for the next couple of weeks, huh? Uh, yeah, they should be. Out in Coachella, California, in the desert near Palm Springs. You ever seen it uh, take longer to produce an official decision, Roy? No, but uh, you're I, tempted to say no. There appears to be a counting convention going on over on the far side of the ring. Yeah, but I don't like stuff like that. No, this is uh, disquieting, to say the least. Now, if you look at the far side of the ring, behind where Stevie Johnston is standing, Michael Buffer and uh, a group of men appear to be sorting out the question of who has won the fight. Classic contrast there. Johnson's cap promoting nutritional supplements of the highest order. And Bazan's cap promoting the popular nutritional supplement of Tijuana. Has he got it? Let's go to Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards. Memo Ayon scores about 116 to 113. He has it for Bazan. Anek Hong Tong Kam scores it 115 to 112 for Johnson. And Michael Pernick scores it 114 to 113 for the winner by split decision from Denver, Colorado. He is the new lightweight champion of the world once again. So by the razor-thin margin of one point, they get it right. Roy Jones, what can you tell us about what goes through the mind and the stomach of a fighter like Stevie Johnston as he waits for that third score in that situation? Well, I can recall a day like that back in Seoul, Korea, and I kind of knew what was going on, but it was a very scary feeling. And you could see the consternation on Johnston's face as you look at the final punch stat numbers that demonstrate how Stevie won the fight. 45% connect percentage. 323 out of 716. He was accurate and sharp all night long. Power punches, that's where the real margin was. He landed 84 more, threw just as many, and a 15% margin in connect percentage. Let's go up to Larry Merchant with the man who has regained his title, Stevie Johnston. Thank you, Jim. Congratulations, Stevie. What won the fight for you? Well, first of all, I want to thank God, thank my family for standing behind me, and uh, thank HBO and Top Rank for having me on. Uh, I told you, I, just, I didn't let nobody get in my head this time, Larry. That was it. What do you mean by that? 
I didn't listen to his coaches. I didn't listen to his managers. I just went out there and stuck to my game plan. You're implying that when you fought the last time, you were influenced by what other people said? Yeah, a lot. Um, like I said the other day, um, my, my, my heart got in the way of the last fight. I wanted to stand there, and I know he had he was a good inside fighter, and he was catching me with a lot of uppercuts over, uh, last time. And this time, I just boxed him. Uh, just put it all together this time. He saw it. Were you surprised that the result was so close? No, because he was a, tr a true champion. He's a true champ. He came to fight. He didn't want to come off his belt uh, easy because I had him hurt a couple of times, and he'll, he'll still come back fighting. So I, I tip my hat off to him again. And also, I want to thank EAS. Do you want to thank Shank, uh, Shane Mosley in advance for having you two guys try to unify some lightweight titles? Well, like I said, uh, I'll be happy to fight Shane, but I had to get past Bazan first. Well, you did, but are you going to fight Shane Mosley? Are you going to tell your promoter and your manager, if let's fight Mosley? All right. Now, I want to fight in Denver now. I want one in Denver. Then we go for Mosley. I ain't never fought in my hometown. Thank you very much, Shane. Okay, Jim, uh, I guess overall we got what we expected. Neither fight was easy, but now we have what looks like two very good opponents for two great champions, Roy Jones and Shane Mosley. Jim?